This is just a little video on how I wired my Quincy QT54 two-stage 60-gallon four-cylinder air compressor. And in the box, I installed the 50-amp breaker as recommended by Quincy. I also used the 8-gauge wire because 8-gauge wire is compatible with a 50-amp circuit breaker. What I did was I installed the 50-amp breaker, and then I ran the 8-gauge wire out the bottom of the box, and I went down to a cutoff box. And I'm going to move over towards the other box now. This is a square D box. All this does is turn a unit on and off. Technically, I don't need this because my compressor is actually right next to the to the uh, circuit breaker box. This here is a 60 amp on off switch. It is not a circuit breaker. This is just an on off box is all this is. So I have the hay gauge wiring coming into this. I have it coming back out on the other side of the of the box and what it does it runs right over here into my magnetic starter this is a motor starter it's a p30t you can get these are not very expensive and for this compressor it works perfect but what you do is i run in the wiring uh, the eight gauge wiring into the magnetic motor starter box on the top side you have wiring that runs over to your pressure switch. So coming out, here's your pressure switch. When the pressure switch activates, it completes a circuit and it sends a signal over to, uh, completes a circuit and sends your signal back over to this magnetic starter. And what that does, that now activates the magnetic starter so it completes the circuit from the top half of it to the bottom, completing your circuit. And then coming out of the bottom is eight gauge wire up to the motor. So there you see it comes out, goes up and into the motor box. So now you have a completed circuit and it turns the motor on. Now this still has this thermal protection in it. So the motor still retains all that. So if anything inside the motor itself was to overheat, it's gonna pop its own thermal protection and there's your reset button for that. But the uh, magnetic starter is really something that I recommend for these compressors. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're running 220 volts, plus however many amps through that switch at startup. And depending on how much you're using the compressor as to how many startup amps you're gonna get. The hotter the compressor gets from running longer, the more load it's gonna put on the switch. So, what ends up happening is when you run 220 to this switch and all the amps through it, it burns out the contacts on it. Now the nice thing about this starter box is this incoming line from the magnetic starter box, this is 110. So you're only running 110 volts into the starter box now, and you're only using one side of the, of the contacts. There's two sets of contacts, but you only need to use one side because of the magnetic starter. If one side, of, if the set of contacts you're using was to ever burn out, you could simply switch over to the other set of contacts, which will be like brand new. Setting it up like this, you should be able to operate one of these switches for many years before you would ever burn out one set of the contact contacts. And if you did, switch over to the other set. You could run it for many more years. So this is a good way to preserve this switch. Uh, if you ever did burn out the second set of contacts, then you just purchase a new switch and you start over with it. But again, you're only running 110 volts through it instead of 220 and all the startup amps are being avoided through this switch. It's just a simple, it activates the, the 110 down over to the electric starter motor and then it handles all the 220 and all the amps through the electric starter. So I hope this information helps.